friends, it's time for another Friday fun fact, where I'll provide you with a tidbit of information that you might not have known before. This Sunday is March 14th, which makes it Pi Day. Let's celebrate by learning what it is, where it came from, and why it's important. To start, we're talking about this pie, 3.14, etc, 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 not the tasty kind. It's also known as the ratio of any circle's circumference to its diameter. No matter how small or big the circle is, the ratio is always pi. Seems like sorcery, but it's just math. However, it wasn't always called pi. That was first used by British mathematician William Jones in the 1700s and was later popularized by the Swiss mathematician and physicist Leonhard Euler, who was pretty famous during his day. The symbol is the Greek letter P, probably to represent perimeter. Before that, they just used long and roundabout ways to say it, so going to just two letters was a massive improvement. Pi is an irrational number, which means that its digits go on forever, but don't repeat like the decimal form of 1 sixth, which is 0.16 repeating. It's just six forever. To make math a lot easier, we use the approximation of 3.14, or 22 over seven if you're fancy and think fractions are fun. We've used computers to figure out thousands of pious digits, but only advanced scientists and mathematicians need more than two or three decimal places. However, approximations of pi were known as long ago as the Babylonians, circa 2000 BCE. They had calculated it as 3.125 by inscribing a hexagon inside a circle and assuming the ratio of the hexagon's perimeter to the circle's circumference as 24 over 25. An assumption, but a pretty close one. The rhymed papyrus, dating to about 1650 BCE, shows that the Egyptians had figured out how to calculate pi as well. They were a bit closer at 3.16045, or 256 over 81. Pi really starts to get complicated in ancient Greece, circa 250 BCE, with Archimedes. In the tradition of people who somehow have oodles of time on their hands, he devised a complicated but more accurate method of calculating pi. He worked off of the Babylonian method by inscribing polygons with more and more sides within a circle, and then taking the average of those ratios. This was super time consuming, but his output of 3.1418 was incredibly close. Over the next few centuries, mathematicians all over the world used their talents to expand our knowledge of pi. In the 17th century, Isaac Newton used his newly formulated binomial theorem to quickly calculate 16 digits of pi. And later in the 20th century, Indian mathematician Srinivasa Ramanujan developed a method of calculating pi that was so accurate that it was later used in computer algorithms. Pi is used for a lot of important things. Calculations relating to electron orbitals, satellite orbits, pendulums, and even electromagnetic waves. But why do we, non-mathy people, need pi? Well, if you've ever used anything that's even remotely curved, you've benefited from pi's existence. From wheels, to coffee cups, to music, to standard deviations, pi's been in the mix somewhere. You might not need to calculate it or use it in calculations, but it's been there in the background, helping you out. These are the sources I use for this fun fact. Citations below. And if all this talk about pie has put you in a baking mood, here are some excellent cookbooks in our library system. Like and subscribe for more Friday fun facts, and I'll see you next time.